ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. So for all your tea sipping needs, make sure you guys go to lovelytea.net or amazon.com forward slash shops forward slash lovely tea. Thank you guys once again for supporting my channel and stay tuned for the video. All right, you guys, I want to do an update on the whole Jesse Smollett situation. Yes, I butchered his name last time, but ask me if I give a fuck. Nope. So what's going on right now with Jussie is basically this. I have posted it this morning on social media, on my Instagram page. Um, basically, as of February 8th, the police were saying that if Jussie refused to cooperate and hand over his phone, and they're not able to find evidence of this attack, that he will be charged with making false claims. This is what was posted online. Go ahead and check this out. They're saying this just in. Two persons of interest in relation to the Jesse Smollett attack in Chicago turned out to be homeless and were never near Jesse Smollett. Also, Smollett didn't have a broken rib as he claimed. He also still refuses to give over his phone despite claiming it has evidence on it. So that was a tweet from Breaking News Live on February 5th. Then another woman named Emily Zanotti, she wrote this in response to them. This was on the 8th. She said that the CPD has subpoenaed Smollett's phone records per a friend on the force. Then another gentleman who works uh, for the Chicago paper, Raffer Weagle, he says, hashtag Chicago Police Superintendent Eddie Johnson says, Jesse Smollett is being treated as a victim in this case, but if the investigation does reveal that he made false reports, he will be held accountable. All right, so you guys just heard me read that. So like I said, they end up subpoenaing his phone. They get the phone, right? And so now it's just been announced as of an hour ago that there was so much redacted information on the phone that they still are not able to figure anything out. Jesse claimed that he was talking to his manager. The manager only sent the police a screenshot, okay? But there's no information, there's no evidence of them really talking. This entire situation is getting crazier and crazier. I want you guys to go ahead and check out this news clip and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Raising doubts as Chicago police work to find the two men who allegedly attacked Jesse Smollett. They say the actor has refused to turn in his phone as his neighbors now begin to question the attack. We'll turn to Chris Spargo in our New York newsroom. And Chris, how is Jesse Smollett responding to people who are now starting to doubt his side of the story? Well, Jesse, Chicago police are now saying that they have received records from Jesse Smollett, but they're insufficient. The Empire Star handed over information from his phone as requested by officers, but it was heavily redacted, they claim, and did not contain information that was useful to their ongoing investigation. Police would also neither confirm or deny whether they plan to request the call records from the phone company, however, as is standard practice in these cases. And the Chicago PD has previously said that it has no reason to believe that Smollett or anyone else who has given statements about the attack is lying. Chris Spargo in New York, thanks. All right, so you guys just heard what was said. So anyhow, TMZ is doing an update. They were able to contact Jussie's management team, and this is what they're saying. So as of 11 o'clock this morning, they're saying a rep for Jussie told us that Jussie is the victim here, which has been stated by superintendent of police. Jussie has voluntarily provided his phone records within an hour of the attack and given multiple statements to the police. Chicago PD has repeatedly informed us that they find Jussie's account of what happened that night consistent and credible. The rep continues, Superintendent Johnson has been clear from day one that Jesse is a victim and we are continuing to work closely with the Chicago PD and remain confident that they will find Jesse's attackers and bring them to justice. Then around 1120, they said, as for the redacted information, any redacted information was intended to protect the privacy of personal contacts or high profile individuals not relevant to the attack. At this point in time, y'all can get mad. Y'all getting y'all's feelings. I don't give a damn. I'm not buying this, just like I said in my first damn video, the curious case of damn Jesse Smollett. I'm not buying none of this. I feel like this has been going on for far too long. The fact that they've been asking for this man's phone from day one, and it took him two weeks to hand it over, only after it was subpoenaed, mind you. Then they get the phone. It's a bunch of redacted information. If you're really trying to solve a hate crime, if you're really trying to get help, you would give them your phone as it is, okay? It shouldn't really matter what's on your phone. As long as it's not child pornography, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. So this entire situation, me, my tin hat is tingling. 
it's not sitting well with me at all. I'm not buying what the hell just he's trying to sell. And another thing, if he's refusing to corroborate, if he's redacting information, if he's doing all this stuff to basically affect the investigation, then at this point in time, they need to stop wasting Chicago's tax dollars. They need to stop wasting the tax dollars on this frivolous case. If he's unwilling to provide the needed information to solve this case, you know what I'm saying? If he's not willing to put his best foot forward and get everything done, then at this point in time, I think that the Chicago Police Department should wash their hands of this investigation and possibly look into charging him. Because like I said, from day one, the story never made sense. This entire story has had more twists and turns than the damn Underground Railroad, okay? Okay. I'm not feeling it. I feel like Jesse's full of crap. I still stand by my original video. I feel like he was looking for some damn street meat and he got more than what he bargained for. The same two people that were out there around that same time ended up being homeless people. And since then, they haven't found anybody else who walked by at that particular time when there's cameras all over Chicago, especially in that area. He's not living over there in the south side in somebody's projects. This is a beautiful, well-developed area of Chicago. Lots of money, lots of cameras. And you've been telling me they cannot find this beat down anywhere. I'm not buying the holes in this story. I feel like he did this possibly for attention with the help of his management team, with the help of Lee Daniels. And then also let's not forget that around the same time that he was beat up, Taraji P. Henson was sitting there saying, you know, go stream his music, go watch his new music video. They were promoting his music, and in that music video, there was somebody in there wearing a noose. This is, is how uh, you're trying to promote their music. That just don't seem right to me. To that me. Didn't even, that didn't to even me. feel like Taraji saying that. I, that's, I could never see Taraji saying that. that. And I don't know her, but it was just I don't know her felt either. weird. <laughs> and if it didn't feel, feel weird, it felt weird coupled with Lee Daniels' post and delete. And it felt a whole lot weirder when the video of whatever single she was promoting had a dude with a noose in it. Mm. Mm. I've seen enough. Yeah. It's a little entire situation sounds to me like a plot line for empire i'm not buying it it's gone on way too long and at this point in time being that he's redacting information he's not being 100 honest i can't take his situation seriously which is sad and a shame because it's going to affect the next person who's a true victim of a gay bashing who's a true victim of racism and everything else bow wow had more bruises on his body more scratches on his face than just who supposedly was jumped by two racist men okay he has a scratch under his I. Meanwhile, Bow Wow's having to lick his damn wounds, okay? So this entire situation is crazy. If y'all want to sit there and believe him, be my guest, but I'm not buying what the hell he's selling, okay? So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this updated situation concerning Jesse. Do you feel like at this point in time he has something to hide, being that it's taken him so long to get the phone to the police, and then once the police got the phone, they're saying that there's not enough sufficient evidence? Do you feel like he just did this for attention and that there's other people behind this? Are you buying Jesse's story, or do you feel like at this point in time that he lied? and now that the FBI and everybody's involved he's probably feeling some type of way because now he's gotten in way over his head you know so this entire situation is crazy I'm, I'm still gonna fall back and watch how everything plays out but right now it's not looking too good so anyways y'all let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment all right deuces